Welcome, welcome, welcome. Great to see you guys all logging on. I'm excited to have such an amazing panel with us today. And you guys are, gonna, are in for a treat for sure. Um, we've got such an amazing panel. We've got um, amazing attendees log logging on here, I see. And hey, Barbara. Hey, Mich Michelle. Hey, Brittany. Um, super excited. Oh, Gianna's logging on. So great to see you guys all logging on. This is going to be a, an amazing conversation today because we have an amazing group of women joining us. Um, I am a fan of every single one of the women in this room. I'm a big, big fan of all the women in this room. And I am going to be, um, we're going to be talking about thought leadership, something that is just really top of mind for me, something that I have been playing in the world of thought leadership for decades. I got to do thought leadership work back in my corporate days. Um, I, I had a multi-million dollar budget with Ogilvy to run a, a thought leadership program, which was really fun. And today, and it was fun, and I was doing it in the energy industry. Today, I get to do it with women <laughs> entrepreneurs, and it's much more fun to do it with women entrepreneurs. So I will all day long go there. I believe that women's wisdom is the medicine that our earth needs. And each and every one of you logging on here has an impact that you're meant to be making in the world. And it's our voices that get us there, right? It's our voices that get us out in the world to be seen, to be heard, that helps us grow our businesses. And it's, um, it's this is, I'm on this mission to raise up 1 million women's voices around the world, help them raise up their, their businesses. And really, it, it's a ripple effect. It's what each one of you are doing as you're going out and you're putting your words out into the world and it's the ripple effect that we can create together so um i've been working with women entrepreneurs for many many decades i'm a business coach i am a woman who believes that you need to be out and have your voice out in the world and let's dive in and let's um dive in to meet some of our panelists today so first of all we have this amazing panelist uh, group of women joining us today. Um, we've got Rachel Jane Groover, who is the founder of the Awaken School, a community dedicated to spiritual awakening, human potential, and entrepreneurship. She is a best-selling author of three transformative books. I love her books. Her books are amazing. She's a TEDx speaker. She's an Inc. 5000 CEO. Rachel Jane is the creator of The Art of Feminine Presence. I got to the opportunity to, to become certified in her work several years ago. And it was really transformative for me when I really st stepped into that art of feminine presence. I think it was something that I did not have back in my corporate day in the oil and gas industry. So it was, <laughs> thank you, Rachel Jane, for letting me bring that out and let that come to life. Um, she, it, she She's um, trained, it's a revolutionary program that has been taught worldwide to over 13,000 women in the last 13 years. Her work empowers women to step into their full potential, both, both personally and professionally, and to make a profound impact on their communities. Welcome, Rachel Jane. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah. And Vivica Von Rosen is a celebrated LinkedIn expert. She is a best-selling author and transform transformational speaker. She is dedicated to empowering female executives and entrepreneurs act to activate, actualize, and amplify their legacy businesses. With over 19 years of experience in the LinkedIn marketing and sales, she is a recognized authority in the business business world. As an accomplished author and international speaker, Vivica captivates audiences with her keynote addresses on transition, transformation, catalyzing them to find their voices and create their own transformative ventures. Welcome, welcome Vivica. Hello. And Monique Bryan is an innovative entrepreneur and personal brand architect who seamlessly fuses style and entrepreneurship. Armed with a BA in fashion design, Monique has launched three successful startups and partnered with major players such as PayPal, Burberry, Tom Shoes, and Shopify. With over 15 years of expertise, she leads her award-winning personal brand consultancy, specializing in helping women in business strategy step into the spotlight. Monique is on a mission to empower a thousand women led businesses to build less lasting legacies through their personal brand, offering invaluable insights and strategies for success. 
So tell us, tell us, um, are you guys excited to hear from them? Drop it into the, the chat, say yes, you're, let us know how excited you are to hear them. And also drop into the chat who you are, um, what you do, and where, where you're joining us from. So we know who's in, in, the, in the room. Um, so let's dive in. Um, I want you to get out paper and pen and be ready to start taking some notes because I know there's going to be a lot of wisdom drops happening here today. And, and um, as, as we're going along, and if there's something here that really resonates with you, drop the, the phrase golden nugget. Um, because those are the ones that we want to really make sure that we, you know, we remember these golden nuggets that you're going to hear. And I know you're going to be hearing golden nuggets as we, we come into this. So one of the things that I want you to just pause and, and start to think about, if the whole world could hear one message from you, what would it be? And this is an opportunity for you to just start to feel into what it, what's that message that you want to be putting out into the world. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples and you guys can drop into the chat who you think they might be written by. Um, so the first one is a, a quote. This is a message, like a one message, a big message that, that somebody says, you can choose courage or you can choose comfort. You, you cannot have them both. Um, who do you think, I would love to hear from you in the chat. Who do you think might have said that? Um, so just drop into the, the chat on that one. There's Michelle already. She's got it right off the bat. Brene Brown says that one, right? Um, here's another one. I, I let go of the need to control and let the universe do her thing. Um, who might've said that one? Guessing you might know who that might be. Any guessers? Marianne Williamson, close, close, close. I think Gabby B too. What? I was thinking Gabby B too. Yep. Oh, they, oh, Monique yep, and exactly. I are on like the same wavelength. Yep. Totally. Like Gabby I'm like exactly so for the trivia. I'm like. Yeah, <laughs> totally. That's who it is. Okay. It here's is? one more. Here's one more. Girls should learn history and then make it. Anybody have thoughts on that one? No, not quite. No, no. Nope. Malala. Malala is oh, who says that one, right? So we know what these women stand for. So you guys start to, so they have a one message that they really, really stand for. So over the years, I've got to help my clients develop some of their one messages for the world. So for example, Dana Kirchmar is one that I love to share. Hers is, what if we stopped asking girls if they're good at math and instead started asking what problems they want to solve in the world. She's a rocket scientist. She's, she's my rocket scientist client, right? So what <laughs> is that thing, girls? Um, Antone Thompson's another one. Um, Midlife isn't a crisis. It's an opportunity for profound momentum and impact. Um, Vivica here joining us, her, her, hers is women's words change the world. So these are, are, are just ways that when you're thinking about your one message for the world, um, it's a couple of things. It's your opinion. It's something where you're putting a stake in the ground. It's memorable and it's repeatable. It's um, it's it's gets people to stop and think and act and do differently. It's not a tagline. It's not a positioning statement. This is a different level of of thought leadership that we're starting to talk about here. It's not a quote from somebody else or an inspirational saying. It's really something that you're putting a stake in the ground that you want to stand for. So I wanted to start with that just to get you guys thinking about. Uh, what's a one message for the world that you have and those seeds are planted you've got them you can play with them now I want to turn over to our panelists because that's one of the things that I start my clients on when we're starting to talk about thought leadership and then as we as we um I what I want to do next is knowing that we have so much noise in in the world we have you know digital noise all around us in fact we're we are exposed to um so much. So um, the question I want to ask you guys is, can you share what, how you have developed your own leadership of thought? What advice can you give to our listeners today about how they can establish their presence as a leader in the space? And I'm just going to go as how I see you on the screen here. So Vivica, I'm going to start with oh, you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I've, I've had different stages of this and I just need to put out there, like, 
I remember sitting in Rachel Jane's living room of her old, old, old house, probably 2006. I love to hear those stories. Yeah. Doing, doing the divine feminine work. And, and that really helped. And I probably need to do it again. So um, it's funny. I was thinking just the same thing. I should need to go back and do it again. Exactly. Like she has been at this a long time and she has 100% dominated, you know, her arena in a good and loving and, 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 and feminine way. Um, but yeah, just kudos out to, to Rachel Jane for, for having the fortitude and that that's part of how you, you, you get that thought leadership is you're in it consistently. Like you don't follow every little new thing and become the AI expert. And now I'm the chat GPT expert and now I'm the, you know, whatever the latest and greatest expert is like she has, she has stayed true to herself and her message. And of course her business has morphed, which I'll let her talk about that. But anyway, me, you were asking me. So (laughs) <laughs> I mean, for me, um, I was fortunate in my LinkedIn expert years. I got into LinkedIn early. Um, there weren't many other people, much less, you know, women uh talking about it. Um, in an interesting uh in, in an interesting um circle of events, I had a call yesterday with the person, uh, my friend Frank Cottle from ABCN, who gave me my first speaking gig. And we were like, oh my God, that was probably 18 years ago, maybe 19 years ago, um, which is crazy to me that it's been that long. But I kind of found this thing called LinkedIn, saw the value in it. And that was my thing up until like last year. Not that I, I'm still very active on LinkedIn, obviously, but I'm no longer, you know, considered just the LinkedIn expert. But for me, it was that stick to and not, and, and not following all of the, 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 the shiny objects. Um, that's number one. And, you know, being authentic with your voice. I mean, we've all heard that for the past 20 years, but with AI and the power of AI and all of the, you know, the ease of writing with AI, um, I am finding a lot of the articles I read, including my own, are starting to lose that individual voice. I'm like, okay, I got to get back in there and like stop being lazy and letting AI do all my writing. Like I have to get in there and, and, and be me because that's what's really going to differentiate us and help us stand out. And then I, I think that, that you just said that <laughs> because it's so easy to fall into letting yes. AI do a lot. Yeah. And we can lose our soul through that if we don't literally. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm, I mean, I, I'm going to fess up like there's no way I could have pivoted in, in the past, what is it? It's nine months like I have without it. So I'm very grateful for the tool and it's too easy in some cases. And so we, we, we do have to get our own voices and our own personalities inside there. And then finally, I think, um, honoring our communities. I, I, I've always loved working with women and I felt that pull to work with women, but then I kind of sidestepped for a mere seven to 14 years, um, you know, working with men in the B2B industry. And so I felt a loss of integrity there. I don't know if it showed or not. It probably did. But I felt that loss of integrity. It's so badly that the last time I was on stage as the LinkedIn expert, I was kind of watching myself from above realizing I wasn't honoring my own voice and I really wasn't honoring the audience that I wanted to be working with, which is women. And so when I did make my pivot, it was like, okay, I need to honor my audience and that's women 50, 60, 70 and above. And so being very, very clear on who my audience is and honoring them was a big part of what allowed me to pivot. And then also um, I hope <laughs> is helping me build my thought leadership in, in my new space. That's so exciting. And it's, um, it's been fun seeing that transformation, but that knowing that that was not where you were meant to be really yeah. taking your message out into the world. And you knew that, and it was, it took a lot of courage to make that leap. Mm-hmm. Um, so just really, really admire that. I think that's a really important one because if we're not being authentic to who it is that we're wanting to serve, we can be off course with that for sure. For sure. 
Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. How about you, Rachel Jane? Yeah, well, I can use a little bit of the art of feminine presence trajectory to answer this question around thought leadership, because to me, thought leadership is being on the edge of new thought, right? Like I'm leading thought. And when we started Art of Feminine Presence, me and my husband would be up in the office and we'd be down in the living room and Vivica's one of them. It, it was so modest. It was cover the TV with a beautiful piece of cloth and, you know, gather around and be like eight people maximum. And, you know, within a few years, it moved to a million dollar brand, just that one program of Art of Feminine Presence. And I think that it it, it kind of came into its own with the thought leadership at the space at that time, because it was a while ago and people weren't really talking about the feminine energy as much as it is now. So that's great. Um, but I took my role as guinea pig, right? A, a test subject, um, experimenter, very, very seriously. So whenever I was seeing something that was not working in my life or people were not responding to me the way they did, because Art of Feminine Presence is all about having the authentic magnetic presence that will have people attracted to you who you want, not the ones you don't want, very easily because that was not what was happening in my life. It was it was not the men I wanted. It was not the clients. There was none. It was very difficult. And so I was playing with these practices and how they related to my relationships, a lot to my business because it was struggling big time. And so when it wasn't working, I would figure out what a practice was that would make it work. And I think people do that to a certain degree in their business, right? They're doing something that has helped them move. Yes, but totally. I also, yeah, yeah. So it starts there. But I also do see a lot of laziness, like a laziness of that it's not actually working in their life as, as perfectly as they want. And, well, why is that? What's happening? And and keep being that thought leader of what is the new thing that people are struggling with and using you. So, so it was me first. Then it was um, people who I knew I could get results easily, right? Which Vivica and you, you Carrie, were a perfect example. It's pretty darn easy to make these women shine and be in their feminine power because they were already to a big degree before I met them. So, so that was next. And then after that, it was hundred percent results anyone, anytime, anywhere. And so that's when the speaking started taking off because I was bringing people up on stage and I would always pick the hardest person in the room to make look magnetic. And when you could, I could <laughs> show them within like 20 seconds, people were like, what the, this is incredible. And so it's really going into that level of what that next piece is. And I think that so many people want followers. They're like, how do I get more followers? But they're not focused on becoming the person people want to follow, mm -hmm. right? I and I that. was getting that wrong too, you know, like, yeah. So just keep coming back to that, that point of your, the test subject, and then getting it into a solution. So Art of Feminine Presence was 44, practice still is, is that's a solution for being seen and being heard and being an inspiring leader and selling. I, I sold the solution, even though I was the brand, I was selling the 44 practices, the, the, the leadership, um, the, the thought leadership work. So keep your eye on the solution as well and promoting that as much as you promote your personal brand. Mm, I think that's really brilliant. I think it's brilliant that, that, well, one, it does start with us, right? It, oh, I mean, it's like, we always teach what we need to learn and that by doing that, we actually can embody what our work is and we can embody our messages because we understand it so deeply. Um, and that teaching the solution is, is, is so such an important part of this, right? It's not just the, it's just not the, it's really getting to the heart of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel Jane. Mm -hmm. how, how about you, Monique? 
I, it's, it's funny because I, when I started in personal brand, I didn't know what thought leadership was. Like, I feel like it's something that's come up in the last few years. And I, I feel like I do enough research to know what I'm talking about, but I was, I, and it's something that I, because people know it's a, it's kind of a buzzword now I use it in my marketing because if those are the people who want to be thought leaders, then I want to be speaking to you. But, um, one of the key things, and I think we've, you know, we've touched on, you know, just like what Vivica was saying, you know, everybody wants to be the next thing, right? It's, they're not spending the time in the thing that they actually are. And that's something I was guilty of, like for many, many years, right? I was this, and then I was that. And when I was uh, started off as a, you know, I was a fashion designer and then I was a jewelry designer. And then I was, uh, I was in a startup. I was operations manager. And then I was a business coach. And then one day I had a friend and I was about to launch my next thing. She's like, we're at lunch together. And she's like, and I was telling her about this amazing thing I'm going to be launching. And she's like, Monique, can I be honest with you? And I was like, your friend say that's your like, I suppose at yeah. your own risk. And she was like, can you just own the space of personal branding and stop all of this other mess? And I was like, personal branding, what's that? <laughs> I was like, what are you? She was like, everyone else knows that's what you do except you. And I was like, oh, okay, tell me more about that. And I then I started doing my, re my research around and I was like, oh, I'm like obsessed with this. Like this is an obsession without having a title on it, you know? And I was like, well, if I'm going to own the space, then I want to make sure that I'm, you know, looking to the pioneers who've done it. And what does it really mean? And it changed, you know, year to year, it becomes more and more important as a professional, as an entrepreneur um, for anything, if you ever want to sell anything. So I really wanted to look at like, okay, if this is something I had, you know, just like what Rachel was saying, like, we are our first test subject. I was like, okay, I know. I'm going to need to live in this space for five years. Like I, that's what I've given myself. Any podcast I've listened to, like I'm a student of things, right? Like five years, you don't get to say you do something else. Now it doesn't mean you're not something else. You just don't get to say it. And in the establishing the thought leadership, when I think about that, it's like you are just carving out this space in somebody's mind that when they have X problem, your name comes out of their, comes out of their mouth. That is the number one thing I teach from the beginning. Because you want to be top of mind, you want to be first thought of. And because there's, you know, there's so many different people in trains of thought around, well, multifaceted is amazing. You're not just one thing. You don't want to be put into a box. And I believe all of those things. And what I know is we are constantly bombarded by ads, imagery, um, conflicting information daily. We do not have time to embrace all your multifacetedness. You know, we just don't, right? So I'm, I always tell clients, you know, and I, you know, and I remind myself, Winnie, you're not one thing. And I tell them you are no one thing. Of course not. That's impossible. And I need you to be that one thing to someone else in their eyes. So you can be top oh, yeah. of mind, but also so people can refer you when they say that thing. And I, I always say like your thought leadership is the thing that you're talking about, you're passionate about. And if Oprah was to call you tomorrow and you had zero preparation and they're like, we're sending a car, you're coming to the show. What's that thing you could talk about with no preparation, like on the fly, on the dime? I'm like, that's your thing, right? Whether it's your passion, your thought leadership, call it what you want. But I'm like, if that's, that is the thing. And as long as you can still answer yes to that. And I, and I, again, I say it to myself, can you still answer yes to that? And you get into these passionate conversations about that thing. Um, then that's the thing. And then the other piece is just, you know, own it. And I do feel like people don't want to, they don't want to either ostracize some people. And I don't want to be, you know, just like you were saying about like working with men, like I, I'm the same, like, I know I don't want to work with men yet. There'll be somebody who will come in the door and I'll be like, Oh, we're working just over this, this one, this one guy. It's fine. It's always a shit show of something not necessarily always their fault but also just energetically we're just not aligned for the how I do things so just you know owning it is so key so I love that so much because I see a lot of people that do want to do all the things all the dimensions and they and they get lost in the noise then because people don't know what they stand for so I think that's that's brilliant that's totally totally brilliant okay um on to this next question 
you know, we are in a, in a place where we get hit with 60 to, to or 6,000 to 10,000 ads per day. I mean, that's a lot coming at us, like so much message, so much information. And when you think about in this digital age, what is the single most important strategy that you have implemented to build a brand that stands out amongst all this noise? And how has your approach to client attraction transformed in the last couple of years? So Monique, I'll start with you here. Oh, I was thinking of, I was like, oh, we're going in a circle. So I thought I was last. No, no, you're going to first. <laughs> um, one, one thing, and I wish I could quote who, where I heard this from, but I can't remember. I just know I write it down like every, every, every time I'm like, what's going on right now. Um, one of the key strategies I've implemented is this thing called marketing moments. And I find when you're in, you know, you're knee deep in the thing that you're doing, you forget that. People, like you said, six, 6,000 to 10,000 things coming at them all the time. It's like, what is it in, what's a pattern interrupt for your business where people are following you online and they're reading your email marketing and they're doing all these things, creating these marketing moments where there's buzz, there's something different where people lean in. That has been super key for me. So whether that's- so give us an example. Yeah. So whether that's an in-person event, so I will do like a meetup and it'll be like, okay, who's in the city? This is what we're going to be doing. Meet up at this co-working space. Light refreshments will be there, you know, and it might just be for the people who are local. Um, but then there's also things like virtual, like these round tables, like you're doing. So I also do them. So we've done about five this year and it's a free event for people to come to like the people here. And it's something where they're like, we're talking about something that's just a deep, fun thing to talk about. That's not always come by the thing, come do the thing. It's just like, let's have a discussion and connect in another way. So that's another lean in. Um, another one is webinars or workshops, like having these things that seem new inside of your marketing when you're doing them, they're not, they don't have to be revolutionary, but they have to be a reason for people to be like, oh, you're doing something. You're doing something differently now. Um, so that's a key strategy that I've been using. Ooh, I like that a lot. It's like, it's getting in and getting some excitement going. It's, yeah, it's that it's like flame, it's that flame excited. right? Yeah. Everybody is like, it's so boring online. Yeah. Like it's just so much of the same all the time, yeah. but we're still constantly scrolling. Let's, let's, let's yeah. not get this dead, yeah. Right. So give them a reason to pause and lean into what you're doing. Love it. Love it. How about you, Rachel Jane? Yeah, I would say the number one strategy that's helped is virtual long form events because we've been mm -hmm. doing, you know, events. We're, we're an event company essentially with now our retreat space in Loveland and then COVID, you know, made us yeah. freak out big time and I wasn't doing much coaching or consulting or anything like that. So we had to pivot. But we're still, if you think of the last two years, those virtual events are um making us a lot of money. And so that can be yes. from a one day virtual event or a, I did a, just a recently a two half day um, virtual event or a full three day um, virtual event. So you're doing all three. You're doing all. all yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, teaching that, but depending on, you know, who, where people are in their business and their speaking ability and all of that. But for us, I think of it as moving away from short form to long form because attention is what we're after. Attention is the most valuable currency. So mm. I want to get off the scrolling mode and I want them to get into a room where they are there for days. And if I yeah. can do that, and most of our online are free or very low cost for the virtual because it doesn't cost us a lot to, to do but um, we're not doing much advertising anymore or, or a fraction of it, um, not doing much social media. Everything's long form, um, you know, masterclass, a lot of speaking and getting people into longer things because then they don't have any competition in those few days to, yeah. to do that. So I was a bit like virtual events when it first came, but yeah. even though we're back doing all of our fulfillments and a lot of things there, we'll, we'll keep doing it. Yeah, I love that. It's because I, I definitely did a big virtual. I mean, my Ignite went um, virtual in 2020. And um, I've only done one other big, longer form one since then. Um, so it's, it's, I love that you're continuing to do both and it's, 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 it's really mm -hmm. serving you well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Cool. Thank you. How about you, Vivica? Yeah. I love what Rachel Jane said. And I, and I believe that 100% because that's where the loyalty is right. And those yeah. long, if you can totally. hold someone's attention totally. for mm -hmm. 90 minutes or 90 days. Um, and that being said, uh, you know, going back to what I said before about the authenticity and the originality and, and the, the, the word storyteller that is um, being thrown around a lot, but it's true, right? If we can tell a story and I'm a big fan of video because it's hard to fake. I mean, you can fake video as we know now, but it's hard to fake video. And it's certainly hard to fake the personality behind video. So I, I mm -hmm. still feel like in order to capture people's attention in this world of TikTok reels, et cetera, you know, and do as I say, not as I do in some cases, it is so important to get your, get who you are, get your personality authentically onto, unfortunately, I still think we need to do the socials um, so that we can start to attract people to us individually, and then we can move them in to the, into the more longer form um, events that, that Rachel Jane's doing, but I still think that's important. And one thing is, and I think um, Monique, you, you posted that, or somebody posted, there's so many you know, there, there, there's so many of us doing the same thing. Like there are so many women coaching other women, but one of the 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 learnings I took from very early on is is the Native American hollow tube, and that's we all have the same God divine whatever energy you want to call it going through the tube of us who we are, but it's moving through us, our experiences, who we are, what we've done that voice comes out differently to, to our different audiences. And so if in short bursts, I can get that hollow tube, I can get my unique voice out, then I will attract my right audience, which is going to be maybe different from Rachel Jane's audience, maybe different from Monique's audience. I don't know, Cammie and I have very similar audience, <laughs> uh, but, but by attracting, by using that hollow tube, it, we're not in competition with each other anymore. We're in cooperation yeah. with each other. Yeah, that's so true. And it's, I think when I, I'm actually excited about the, the collaboration that happens today. And I think this is one of our superpowers as women is that we bring collaboration and connection. And um, when we are fully ourselves, when we are shining our light as, as you know, in our brightest light, if we're walking in our brightest light, that's how we're attracting people into our world. And yeah. to me, I think that's been my biggest lesson over the years is, is to, to, you know, truly make sure I'm showing up as me. Um, and I think that over the last few years where I've seen it just shift and, and really start to take shape is in how, how we can, our communities become an intricate part of, of how we show up in our world. So having our communities and having the experience of community, whether it's online, whether it's um, an in-person is really, I think what's made my business sing well in the last several years, because, because of that, it's like people want to be a part of something. They want to be part of a movement. They want to be a part of the change that's happening. And I, and I think women truly are leading this change that we're doing business differently, right? I mean, we, we see business through a different lens. Um, and so when we can, when we can show up as our, our full selves, I would say that visibility is our fire. It's the fire that, you know, puts us out there in the world. Um, and, and we bring that together with the community. I think it's really a powerful combination. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, where we're going to go next, you guys, if you've got questions, you can drop them into the, the chat box. Um, we've got some questions that got pre-submitted um, beforehand. Um so, and um, Vivek, I did love that shaman story. That's really super, yeah. super cool. That conduit, that's really just such a great mm -hmm. visual. Okay, so Kay submitted a question and she said, I'm running dry on topics and would appreciate a way to think about generating fresh ideas and stories. Um, Rachel Jane, why don't you kick us off on this one? Um, any thoughts that you might have on, you know, we're putting content out all the time. How, how do we not run out of ideas? Yeah. Well, this is what I do each time I have to pick up the phone and shoot a video and I don't know what the hell I'm going to talk about is I answer these three questions. First question is what just happened? 
So what just happened, I might, if I had to shoot a video after we, we close here, this is what just happened, this round. Okay. So that's, that's what brilliant. just happened. What did I learn from what just happened? Mm -hmm. So I learned already, I'm making notes, round tables, meetups, blah, blahs, right? <laughs> Whether I have time to do it or not, it's another thing. Um, but what 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 did I learn that uh, that has something to do with my topic, right? And then um, ask the watcher the question, what are you taking away from what I'm sharing, the story of what just happened and what I learned? And there's always something that just happens, so you will never run out of topics. Oh, that's brilliant. Totally brilliant. I love that. How about you, Monique? Uh, I, I, when you're, when people are running out of topics, it's for me, it's always going back to like looking at, I always like to go to my, I always go to a quote. I'm always like, I collect quotes like on my phone. Mm -hmm. So I am constantly gathering content like 24 seven. So my advice to anyone who is struggling with, I'm not sure what to be posting without me knowing your, what your business is, is from this day forward, your your job as a business owner is to be your number one marketer and to collect content 24-7, whether or not you know what you're going to do with it. So for example, today I sat on a beach chair. I'm forcing myself to relax this week. It's a struggle for me by the by the water, okay? Um, <laughs> and I'm sitting there and even though I'm supposed to be relaxing, I also know I'm supposed to be ca capturing content. So I always say like, what's around me? What can I videotape? And what can I put on time lapse? Because B roll content, when we don't know what to say, a video that you have 15 seconds of, you can put any type of content over top of it. It's very interesting and people will still watch it. So I have, I take my tripod everywhere I go. I've got it actually going as we speak to capture snippets. You are always capturing content. That is my vibe. So capture 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Sometimes I just set it up and let it roll. And what usually will happen is when I'm stuck on content and we're always scrolling because we're looking at what everybody else is doing all the time because that's just the nature of the beast, you may find something that inspires you the way people have done something or said something and you can now put your own twist on it, but you're, you will no longer be captured by, oh, but I don't have a video. Like, I don't know what to put. Where do I put this information? You just go back into your camera roll and find one of those 15, 20 second videos. It really doesn't matter what it is. You could be making coffee. You could be driving in the car. You could be walking down the street. Like literally, I if you go on my Instagram, you will find shadows. You will find me walking, the shadow of me walking in the morning. And I, I just capture it. I keep it. And then I put a quote or I put what I'm thinking or I put something over on top of it. And there's content. So that's my yeah. trick. Uh, that's awesome. Um, Barbara asked the question where do you capture and what platform to keep it somewhere where do you keep it you just keep it on your phone i hate listen i don't know who everybody what kind of phones you guys have when i go and upgrade my iphone i'm like what's your biggest storage i said i need oh. whatever you can capture I, listen this okay. is it's cheaper than hiring a, a videographer all the time yeah I, I keep it in my phone i buy the two terabytes on cloud and i never have to go and find my content okay. it's in it's, my fingertips it's so funny because and i know jessica my, my, my EA who's here on, on it, she is cracking up because yesterday she's like, Cammy, you need to send me just video. And so last night I sat on my phone and I kid you not, I sent her like 20 videos. Okay. Wait, so do you have an iPhone and does she have an iPhone? Yeah. So you can create a shared folder on okay. your iPhone. Uh -huh. Like when I did Eleanor's content day, there we go. I have to send her all the videos or pictures. We created, I created one folder, put everything under her name and she can now go share that iCloud link with her team and herself. Oh, yeah. Okay. Always. <laughs> Thank you for that tip. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jana had a great question here. What yeah. if business is slow and sharing what's happening may not be my most positive sh um, moment to share? Mm -hmm. Go, go Vivica. Yeah, that's so funny. Um, it's not funny. I mean, it sucks. But so two things happened recently. Um, I opened up LinkedIn the other day and my friend Michaela Alexis, who's also a phenomenal LinkedIn expert, shared this like devastating post about what she had personally gone through with losing her em an embryo, um, her last one. And I was just like, I started, oh, I'm going to cry right now. I started crying right there. 
Like, and she wasn't going to share that. And I just thought, oh my God, like we as women need to know that other women are going through this. So even if feels awful, maybe that is the most authentic and powerful and uh, important thing you can share. Um, that thing that doesn't feel awesome. Cause yeah, we stroll, we scroll through Instagram and everyone like looks gorgeous and is having an awesome time. Um, like be authentic, like share the shit. Uh, you know, the other day, I think <laughs> Cammy was the happy recipient of this. I like, it just sucked. The day just sucked. And I, I just getting off the couch was all I could do. Um, and you know, I was like, I'm going to be okay with that. And so I shared that as a post, like, get off the couch or don't like, sometimes you just need to take time for yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and again, lots of engagement because lots of people were feeling that way. And when you feel, and when you can share that vulnerability with other people, you see, you are not alone. There's a lot of other people going through that. And then as far as how do you get those ideas? Like literally I have a note that shit I can share. Um, and because you never come up with a great idea when you're sitting in front of the screen or, 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 you know, ready to roll. Like that's never when the great idea comes. Mm -hmm. it, it literally comes when you're taking it or when you're, you know, going on a hike or when you're whatever, when you're doing laundry or doing the dishes, it's never <laughs> when you sit down to write. And no. so having just a notes or notions or whatever you want to use, um, I use notions for organization, but I just honestly I keep going back to notes because it's easy and just opening it up and going, this is what I'm thinking about. I was on a hike this morning and I was getting worked up because I was on an interview where the man said there was no such thing as, as the glass ceiling anymore. And I just was like, Aah. so I started to think, you know, all these notes while I was hiking. And so, yeah, I just have, you know. Should I can Excellent. share? <laughs> I love it. Should I can share? That's that's an official title. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> totally like it. Okay. Um. If anybody, does anybody else have something to add to Janice? Um. You know. Go ahead. Monique. One thing I wanted to add that because we were talking about AI and yes, it can yeah. you know make you sound like a robot a lot of the times, but it is fantastic if you are stuck with ideas. Yeah, it is fantastic. So one of the key things that I do when I'm trying to come up with an idea is I and because Instagram not Instagram, but all social needs a little bit of a jarring, like comment or intro for people to pay attention nowadays. I actually just ask it around the a topic. So if I'm doing personal branding and I was like, I, I need you to act as a social media expert. That's been in the business for 10 years. I need you to create me 20 different pieces of content with captions and examples around the topic of personal branding for this target audience. And I need it to be controversial, contradictory, mm -hmm. and I want people to have a real stir about it, right? And it will pump out all kinds of stuff that you were just like, it'll just give you like some of these juicy kind of like intro titles to grab people. And then you can put your own spin on it, put your own story in there, put your own lesson in there. Um, you can even say, include a stat for three or from for 10 of the 20 right? And cite it, right? So it, when you have a really good prompt for AI, you have no, there are no lack of ideas out there. You can, and this, and this is populated in seconds. Yeah. God, I love AI. It's but amazing. It right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great way to really dive into getting ideas to generate and then to move from that space. Um, so, but Jana's question actually tied to what, what, what a business is slow and sharing what's happening may not be my most positive moment to share. Um, Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I got, I got um, excited in my head because I was like. <laughs> <laughs> do, do Rachel, Jane, or Monique, do you have anything to add to that one? I mean, I just want to, you know, I think vulnerability and all of that is great. It's it's timing and making sure that you're not hurting mm. what you're doing. Because I also see it. I saw Vivica's post with your gorgeous it was like, oh my God. It, but it made sense because it was not, when I was reading it, it wasn't going, oh, am I really going to want to hire Vivica as a mm. coach given that she's dealing with this? Where I do see more of the time those vulnerable posts making me not want to work with them versus mm. want to work with them. So be mindful of like, oh, everyone's commenting and going, oh, yes, yes, yes. 
but maybe going oh so you know that's probably not the the person I'm gonna like really be held so by. it's a tone piece right it's the tone it's, part of that I mean well, I think it's I think it's um I think the tone of vulnerability is great I, like yeah. I think you could be do a lot of different tone but making sure it's not connected to the thing you want me to see you as the expert. I'm going to pay you $10,000 and you're going to hold me when I'm in my shit, right? It's kind yeah. of making sure it's not too connected to that. And Vivica's wasn't, it was, it was like, she's still is a brilliant coach, but I've seen people who coach and they're sharing the struggles and the struggles. I'm like, you don't even have your own life together right now. I don't know if I'm going to start working with you. So yeah. just be mindful of that. And maybe the timeliness of it. Um, yeah, I, I so agree with that. One of the things I've heard is, is you know, don't. I mean, I think it's really good. Like what Vivica's post was awesome because it was in that moment. It was a day, and it was like yes. there's days that I feel yes. like this, and we all have a day that we feel like that. Yes. Versus if it had been a, I mean, you know, so where you see some of the people that are like deep into like, okay, this has been this year, and this is you know where I am, and um, and that can get into it i'm trying to remember. sandra yancey says something um, from e-women she says um um you know kathy mccarty i know you're on this call if you can think of what she says it's like don't it's like you're you don't want to be like sharing your deepest darkest things that you're going through right now at this moment right you want to be past that point and then be able to reflect back on that and learn what were the lessons i learned from that um so i think that that's it's um who put in here maybe wait 24 hours vivica have said that right <laughs> wait 24 hours on that yeah, so but you want to find that you want to find that balance between vulnerability and also keeping yourself as that expert in your field so where you're being vulnerable could be in very different spaces mm -hmm. yeah okay great great discussion um where are we on time okay um this is i'm gonna there's a couple people ask this question um and we'll be really quick on it but it's 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 like how do you when you're, um, how do you become a leader in any field really without stretching yourself too thin by doing this and that and all the other things that you need, you know, for your next thing to get things accomplished is basically the bottom line of this. And there's two questions that came in for that. So I wanted to make sure that we don't um, skip over that one. We have a couple other questions. I can answer those over on um, Extraordinary Women Connect, but this question came in from a couple of people. And when I think about, you know, stretching ourselves too thin and you see that happening, right? You definitely see that happening out in the world. And a lot of what we can do is if we can get really clear on what our messaging is up front, as far as, um, you know, we have our core messages, we have the things that we want to talk about. We really think through a content strategy. We can, um, we can start to, um, simplify how we do marketing. We can simplify how we put content out because we we know what we stand for. We know what we talk about and we don't have to do it all ourselves that way, right? Delegate, exactly. That's where we can start to delegate. If we've done that upfront work where, where, that, um, where our messaging is really consistent. I mean, I can tell you that um, team Jessica here on, on the team, on our call does a lot of my content because she knows what I talk about. She knows how to pull my most important thoughts out. And so we can, you know, she can re repurpose content that I put out there. So that's one of the ways that we can get really smart with our, our messaging and our marketing is to do that. Anybody else have something real quick they want to add to that? Go ahead, Viva. Okay. Yeah, I'm a big fan of delegation, obviously. I mean, it's uh -huh. it's what I hang my hat on and it's it's what's pivoted my business times. That being said, I've I've had clients come to me, unfortunately, they came to me too late who in their wanting to delegate like through tens of thousands of dollars into a, a marketing company, a mm. sales company, a, you know, delegating without yeah. doing their homework first. Totally um, agree. That's, and we all know it. We've all hired VAs yeah. with, you know, <laughs> Crap you want them on adults. your team. You want them on you your want... team. It's an intricate part of your team. Exactly. And you need to take the time. And Cami, I know you can talk about this with Jessica and you were, but you nurtured Jessica. You taught Jessica, you literally taught Jessica your voice. You taught her all your SOPs. You worked her through your business. You, you nurtured her to become the yeah. amazing VA. And I think we get lazy because we're like, okay, I'm going to hire someone and they're just going to know what to do. And unless we're paying them 85 to $185 an hour, 
they're not like you have to nurture and educate and support that VA that you want or, or that, that a social media. I mean, I had, yeah, I had several things. social media people that did not work in my business yeah, because yeah, I like, kept turning it to free and it was like, early. yeah. Yeah. And it, you just can't do that. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's, um, we're going to run out of time. I could talk all day with you, with you ladies. Um, I want to close with one more pearl of wisdom from each of you as it pertains to building your brand as a thought leader in a di in this digital age. Um, and also let people know where they can, um, um, connect with you. So Vivica, do you want to kick us off with that? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I still love LinkedIn. It's just not what I talk about 24 seven, but what a great place to, to switch your brand, to play with your messages. It's still, it's just dumber than Facebook and Instagram and, and TikTok. So you're going to get better um, in most cases, better visibility and results on what you post. It's just a really good place to to start sharing a lot of the strategies and tools that we learned about today. Yeah. And oh, and, and you can find me by like literally Google Vivica Von Rosen, and then you can find me on LinkedIn. I could still Excellent. show up for LinkedIn expert too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Rachel Jane, how about you? Yeah, I want to really just remember the the question that most coaches ask, like, what's your 10 year vision? I resisted that for so long. I was like, how on earth am I going to know what I want in 10 years and where I am and what the world's going to be like? And I would always see like two to three year vision. And last year, maybe 18 months ago, I really like nailed myself down to that question. And when I saw it and got it, and that has to be 10 year vision of what you're willing to commit to working on, not like, oh, you know, that sounds good. But what I was willing to work on it, just since then, it has changed my whole team. We have like 15 full-timers pretty much. Like it's a it's a sizable team. But we've, we've changed our team, changed the marketing strategy, changed so many things. And it's already, I can see it. So don't be scared of that longer term vision of what you're up to versus all this sort of now, which is, you know, we're all caught up in that too. We have to. But I was really glad that I put my feet to the fire with that process and everyone can go to theawakenedschool.com and you can become a free member there we do a lot of different master classes and business coachathons and all sorts of things so theawakenedschool.com excellent 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 um monique how about you um you're gonna forgive me because someone had asked for the prompt and it was a really long prompt so i was writing it and i apologize while you were asking your question but you want the pearl of, the pearl of wisdom i was like <laughs> This prompt is really, I talk a lot. I'm more of a video person than, than, uh, than the writing. Yeah, um, yeah. So yes, the one pearl of wisdom I wanted to um, leave people with is become bingeable. I know there, I mean, most of my clients are introverts. A lot of people don't love doing video. There's a lot of, I don't want to do, I don't want to do this, that, and the third. And I'm just going to put all of that to the side and say, you never know when people are deciding they they need you, they want you, they want to hire you. So I like to think of it as when I had this client who was like, you know, I said, well, I always ask on every intake, how did you find me? What had you, you know, come into my world? And she's like, I've literally binged your content over yeah. the last seven days. And the message there is she had something to binge. So yeah. it fast tracks the relationship when people like, you know, Vivica was saying like video is so key, but having an opportunity to have video, to have, you know, the podcast, even though we're not doing active, like new episodes right now, but they have over a hundred episodes to listen to. They've got Instagram. You can go over to LinkedIn. You can go to the website, right? But there's a place where they can go, where they can just hear me. And if they like what they hear, they're going to keep listening, keep listening. So I encourage everybody to create your own show. And when I show it does not, I don't mean this big production. I mean, a place where somebody can knows where to find you every single week at the same time. And that's how I built my business. I was actually given that task by a coach who's like, you want to launch a program and nobody knows you. And I was like, I'm perfecting the program. And she's like, give me a break. Right. She's like, you have to get out there first. And it was awkward and it was horrible and I hated it. And I kicked over the tripod and I was wearing shirts with lint on, lint on it. Like everything was wrong about these videos. And it gave me practice. It worked a muscle and it honed my voice for me. 
Like I started listening to myself and being like, you see juicy a lot. What is that? You know, there's a story behind that. But anyways, having bingeable content versus followers versus, versus being viral for, for me and my clients, it has been the thing that has changed the game. So that's my pearl of wisdom. I love that so much. And it's right. I, when, when you are in the sales cycle with somebody who's been binging your, your content, it's the easiest sell ever because they're like, oh my gosh, I've already know all the stuff that you teach. So that's, so that's, that's friends already. Yeah. It's We're like already oh, friends, I, I, Monique. I get that a lot. <laughs> like we've already had coffee together. What are you talking about? I've been watching you under the covers all last night. I was like, you and me girl we friends um uh, so <laughs> definitely if you want to find me and you want like have any questions dm me um instagram is where i hang out the most i am really i'm going to come to you because i'm really trying to get my linkedin game on like i really do believe the algorithm is way more favorable over there um but instagram i'm constant on this week technically i'm by the pool but next week we back to business Excellent. Excellent. So, so, so good. So good. Okay. So my pearl of wisdom is to um, really develop a full content. And I've, I've already touched on this, right? I've I touched on, it's like, we, we talked about the, the one message for the world, which is a thought upper level thought leadership message. And then you get into how are you attracting your clients into your business? So you're really speaking your clients love language and you're tapping into that, that space that they're like, oh my gosh, she gets where I am. And you're really building that out and you're building that brand of you from the inside out so that we, we, we hit on this earlier too, is, is you're building that brand so that there's no one just like you, you are unique. And so you build that brand. So you, you, you take these layers of your messaging and you really create that. Um, and you, and you, and you weave your story into the mix of that because your story is intricate to how we put our voices out in the world. So that's my pearl of wisdom. Um, way the ways you can connect with me. Um, you guys are all connected on email at this point. Um, my my website. I do trainings every single month, so you can you can join and 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 join into any of the trainings that I do. The thing that I would like to extend an invitation to you guys with is uh, my Extraordinary Women Ignite Conference is coming up on October twenty fourth through twenty sixth in Golden, Colorado. We have um, we have um, amazing women in the room, including Rachel Jane is going to be one of our speakers. We've got a really amazing um, speaker lineup, and um, we've got um, right now. If you we, this is all about really building out your messaging, your brand of, of what you're putting out into the world. Um, it's so we, we will go deep into building your thought leadership message. We will go deep into building your your client attraction language. Um, we will really look at how you can build a business with more time prosperity and more wealth prosperity. And I'm big on that because I don't want anybody, I want people really finding that, that a business is that they love. Um, tickets right now, if you go out to the website are $597, but here's the deal guys, um, between today and Thursday, you can get a $97 ticket and I'm only going to offer 10 tickets at this price but you can get a $97 ticket between now and Thursday. Um, and if you are not in Colorado, I see that Southwest has airfare right now for like $39. So there's some amazing airfares out there. You can get to Denver pretty easy. Um, use the code um, leader. Um, Jessica just dropped in the, the link there. Um, and so we've got 10 tickets available at that price and it's gonna be just available through Thursday. So, um, and if you're really serious about wanting to dive deep into your, your, your messaging, um, you can also grab one of my prosperity audits and we can, we can dive into your, your thought leadership messaging. I'm happy to do that with you. So um, that's what we've got today. I want to thank my panelists for, for joining us today. I, you guys dropped so much wisdom. I've taken so many notes already and I'm going to go back and listen to and take more notes because um, I know there were so many pearls of wisdom dropped all the way through this. And be sure you connect with everybody on this this panel. And um, thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks for joining us to the to Vivica and Rachel, Thank Jane, you. and Monique. It's awesome to have you guys here. Great to be. Thanks here. everyone. Bye. Bye.